I'm here at the Walnut Creek Police Bomb Squad's training facility. Now today we are checking out all of their amazing equipment and the special skills needed to keep the city and the entire county safe. I'm here with Lieutenant Gorski. Now, you are the manager of the Walnut Creek Bomb Squad, right? Correct. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about the Walnut Creek Bomb Squad. Well, we uh, are the only bomb squad in Contra Costa County. Uh, all the uh, bomb squad technicians are all members of the police department, and they do the bomb squad work as a collateral assignment. So in other words, okay. we all have other duties like working in patrol or uh, as detectives, that kind of thing. Okay, so you are all busy all the time. Pretty much. Okay, yeah. all right. So talk to us a little bit about the funding behind the Walnut Creek Bomb Squad. Well, uh, all the equipment you see here today is pretty expensive. Okay. And uh, thankfully, the uh, federal government pays for almost 100% of our equipment and our training costs. Okay. So uh, the bomb technicians train all over the country. Um, and uh, almost exclusively, the TAB is paid for by Homeland Security money. Okay, all right. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, what might you see on an average call or what type of call do you guys go on? Well, we get uh, around 60 to 65 calls a year. And we see everything from suspicious packages, okay. old military ordinance, um, to actual devices. So it, it sort of runs the whole gamut of, uh, of calls. Talk to us about some of the training that you do here. What can we expect to see today? Well, today what we'll do is uh, we'll start off with a uh, what we call a counter charge shot. Okay. We picked up some items uh, on a call just recently that we need to get rid of on an emergency basis. What we can do is maybe you can help us actually set off that charge. Everything's ready to go. We just need somebody to push the button. Okay, sounds great. Let's go take a look, yeah? Okay. I'm here with Sergeant McLaughlin now. We are getting ready to detonate something. Can you tell us what we're going to detonate? Uh, in the pit downrange, we have what's called some thunder sticks and some okay. pyrotechnic explosive devices. Okay. And we're going to do an emergency destruction of these devices that we've collected from other agencies. Okay, now when you say we, you mean. I'm going to show me. you how to do it. <laughs> All right, I get to push the button, so let's All right. show me what we're doing here. This is your shock tube. Okay. Go ahead and put the shock tube I'm in gonna that put hole. That in. Okay. And I'm going to let you get on this side. We're going to be behind the building. Okay. Okay, yell fire in the hole real loud three times. Okay, fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Push the arm button until you get a red light. Okay. And when you're ready, push the fire button. Okay. I think we just blew a railroad cool. tie off there. You could hear things get hitting over there. I saw a railroad tie pop off. Yeah, yeah that Hands was a I, I just set that one on top. <laughs> I'd say that was a successful kaboom. How did I we do, Sergeant boom. McLaughlin? We got boom. Okay. Every time you get boom, you did it right. Now these are really cool. Talk to us about the robots you have here. Well, we've got two robots. The first one is the Remote Tech uh, F6A. The other one is a okay. Talon robot. And we use them for different applications. The, the black one over here, the Talon, is probably most recognizable for uh, the work it's done overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan with okay. military EOD units. And the remote tech robot over here is primarily used for law enforcement squads domestically here in the U.S. Both robots allow us to send them downrange and deal with the, the hazard versus okay. a bomb technician most of the time. So that's that's our goal is to let the robot do the work versus a person. Okay, what are some of the tasks or things they're able to do? They can carry stuff? They have uh, the capability to be a weapons platform for us. So okay. We can put uh, disruptor cannons on the robots and uh, shoot open packages to see what's inside. Okay. Um, and there's a variety of other sensors and equipment that we put on the robots to deal with um, just about any hazard you can imagine, chemical, biological. Okay. Um, uh, again, they have different applications, so depending on the situation, uh, that will dictate which robot we use. Okay, can this one swing around and Sure, if uh, oh, okay, you're paying there. attention, there Oh, you are. he can hear as well. He can hear, and uh, there's a microphone and a speaker. There. And the uh, arm can move, and <laughs> maybe he can show you that. Do the arm. There. Oh, look, okay. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow, that's cool, okay. Oh, it's opening and closing up there? Nice. So that arm allows the operator to get into places, maybe under a vehicle or in tight spots, um, carry a device or move it around. Okay. Um, whatever's, whatever's needed. Okay, great. So uh, what sort of exercises do you have with the robots today? 
What we're going to do now is we're going to use one of the robots to go downrange and investigate a uh, suspicious package. Okay. This is a training scenario. We've got a suspicious package that's been reported down by a mailbox. So uh, before we send a person, we're going to send the robot down to investigate. All right, cool. Let's go check it out. Okay. Okay, so you just showed me the robots outside. We're inside now, and talk to us about what we're seeing here. Well, uh, Detective Mangini here is operating the robot, and okay. he's going to be driving it up to that suspicious package that we have out there. Okay. And you can see him operating the controls. He's, he's trying to deal with both driving the robot forward and utilizing the arm. So he's trying to use multiple pieces of the robot at the same time. He's looking at four different cameras as he moves forward. So there's a lot going on and he has to really multitask and um, pay close attention. Definitely a lot more difficult than a video game. Yes, yes, it takes, uh, it takes a little bit of practice. And you can see that uh, he's got the device now. and He's moving pretty good there. He's moving pretty fast now and he's gonna take it over to the safe area where we wanna uh, get rid of it or detonate it. And it looks like a successful mission. Good job, Detective Mangini. Well, I had a great time out here at the training facility learning how the Walnut Creek Bomb Squad is working hard to keep all of us safe.